everyone. Especially to all my viewers of my channel out there, most especially sa mga taga Canada, Saudi Arabia, at ang aking bayang sinilangan, mahal kong Pilipinas, at sa iba pang sulok ng mundo na naabot itong influensya ko. Mabuhay tayong lahat! I pray everyone all good health despite of this COVID virus. Well, today in this vlog, I just want to give my perception about my understanding by the movie of Dr. Sleep. I think this movie is not popular to some, to those who are not fan of horror movie. But for a change to some, it's going to be an exciting venue to discuss more about ourselves connecting to this kind of movie. Probably for some, naging trended ang 2011 na Contagion movie. Na dati hindi naman natin ito pinapatid kasi hindi pa popular. At first glance, sino ba naman ang hindi may spook sa ginitong klase ng palabas? Wow, may mga multo, tapos may nakikita kang biglang sumusulat sa dingding na binaligtad na word for M-U-R-D-E-R. At kung ano-ano pa na pangbaliw na eksena. Kung paano ako naging interested panoorin ng movie na to, it started when I first experienced the bizarre scenes from the sneak preview of Dr. Sleep at the movie theater prior to the movie presentation of 1917. Dahil mahilig ako mag-observe ng mga visual special effects, sa madaling sabi, marami akong nakitang kakaiba sa trailer pa lang nito. Yung sa narito, yung vertigo effect. Yung parang nagdi-deliver yung lente ng camera. Isa pa rito yung uh, adrenaline rush, beating of the heart na parang ramdam mo yung intense nung scene. Isa pa yung may mga familiar scene na young girl twin at sa corridor ng hotel rooms. Then upon reading some article, ito pala yung sequel 2 ng The Shining. With that being said about the details and elements of the films, I could say ito yung nagbigay sa akin ng unique experience of cinematic thrill. Obviously, that helps me to expand my horizon when it comes to these creative spectacles. Now, let's proceed to review this film by focusing on the main character whose name is Danny here. He's being traumatized by the event that transpired during his childhood sometime around year 1980 in Overlook Hotel. After the tragic event went on, both he and his mother moved to Florida. And the story goes like he had conquered his fear and was able to defeat disturbing ghosts by the help of his friend. Year 2011, he became alcoholic to stop the so-called shining. He became penniless because of these vices and imprudent lifestyle. When he realized he has hit rock bottom, he moved to another town. He started afresh in his new job. He uses his shining to comfort terminally ill patients. And there he got his nickname, Dr. Sleep. Now we have seen him finally settled in his new turf, new environment, new places, new people to escape the past. Things turn differently when someone who was shining able to send a telepathic message to him asking for help. At first, he was reluctant and advised the girl for her to be safe. She should stop her shining. So yun ang takbo ng story ah. And before the end of the movie, he too find himself connecting to his own past while saving the girl from pursuing Belaine. The movie ends in himself deciding to take this matter in his own hand to finish his own unsettled period of his childhood. Okay, I want to phrase the exquisite performance of Sam McLaren here as a supporting role here. As the crow daddy. Zan was seen as the Kicheta from the episode Kiksuya of Westworld Season 2, a popular TV series by Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy, 
while Rebecca Ferguson is co-starred in the Girl on the Train movie. That movie too was interesting in so many details. I have noted the performance of Ewan McGregor. His disturbed facial expression it sounds epic to me. Here's my thought about this movie. More often in real life, sadly, there are certain people in our life that seems to be unhappy the way we are in. Unknowingly, they are trying to get under our skin, feeding us some negative thoughts, sipping your energy to feed whatever ego until you never know how long you can remain fighting on with your life. Alam natin ang storya ng palakas sa kawali. More of his energy is devoted para tiisin ang hapde ng liyap ng apoy hanggang wala na siyang lakas para umalis kapag kumukulo na ang kawali. That's the connection I saw here in the billions of the story. Moral story here is Learn to say no when you mean to say no. Only say yes if you have means to say yes. That's the thing here. Bam! That's the way the cookie crumble. Next time, sa Manuelia ko for another vlog to hear another review or insights about anything na pwede nating buting tingin, busisiin, at isa-isahin. Just type your comment about what's something about in your life na gusto mong balikan at correct. So yun, madami na akong nasabi. So, what I want you to do is uh, hit your comment down below. Please do subscribe my channel. And I hope in my blog I will see you later. Meanwhile, stay safe. Stay indoor. Okay, see you later. See you then. Bye-bye.